Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen, and these are the top stories from Alpha City News. Madness in Midtown, Assault on City Hall, Black Maria Battles All Comers, Kidnap Citizens in Kirby Park, and finally, a terrifying revelation that rocks Alpha City to its very foundation. From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, from your city to the world and beyond, this is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. This week's top story is as shocking as any I've covered in all of my years with Alpha City News, Alpha Citizens. It began just before noon this past Thursday at the annual Taste of Alpha City Food Fair, running all week on the Edgeley Commons behind City Hall. As the weekday crowd swelled with the beginning of the lunch hour, full of hungry workers ready to sample normally unavailable delights, panic suddenly descended with the arrival of Black Maria the obsidian villainess responsible for a half-dozen daring daylight kidnappings in the past few weeks. Almost before her presence registered, Black Maria attacked the food stand operated by Abraham Mazur, owner and head chef of Habitat on Restaurant Row. Much to the surprise of observers, though, Black Maria ignored Mazur, instead absconding with sous chef Michael Allison. Unlike previous kidnappings, however, Black Maria did not immediately flee the scene with her terrified prey, but instead turned her attention to nearby City Hall. A streak of ebony cut across the clear day as the miscreant, helpless hostage in tow, entered City Hall by crashing through the third floor office window of Deputy Mayor Paul Jenkins. The deputy mayor and his staff were caught by surprise and only escaped through the intervention of Jetpack Jones, attending the food fair, who appeared outside the destroyed window, firing his dual stun guns at Black Maria. The courageous Jones was only able to provide a momentary distraction, though, as Black Maria fired a ball of darkness at the hero, which adhered to Jones, slowly covering him in an obsidian cocoon, fouling his jetpack and sending him falling to the ground. Black Maria took no notice of this, continuing her pursuit of the deputy mayor, blasting her way deeper into City Hall, fighting her way through both police and the mayor's personal security team. Black Maria leapt from the third floor rotunda balcony, managing to catch Deputy Mayor Jenkins just before he could escape the building. While she now had both Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Allison in her grip, it seemed like Black Maria was out of luck, for at this point Radiant, A-Flower, and Hard Strike appeared, all of whom had fought Black Maria before. They were joined almost immediately by Jackie Quick, the Queen of Speed. Black Maria was forced to drop her captives, covering each in the nacreous substance which she had used on Jetpack Jones. The light of hope faded quickly, though, as Radiant once again attempted to subdue the new villain without the help of her comrades. Flying in on a solo attack run, Radiant met not success, but the fast-moving fist of her enemy, and was thrown, insensate, into a flower, and both were knocked into the northeast rotunda wall. Jackie Quick, true to her name, moved in as Black Maria was occupied with Radiant, but found that the Dark Nemesis was ready for her. Ms. Quick threw two punches, but found that both her fists stuck to the inky form in front of her. Turning towards the attacking hard strike, Black Maria used the captured speedster as a defense, forcing her to absorb hard strike's attack. Shocked by this turn, Hardstrike found himself under attack, with Black Maria's nightmare tentacle gripping him by the head. Flinging the now unconscious Jackie Quick away, Black Maria lifted Hardstrike and slammed him into the marble floor of the rotunda, once, twice, a third time, cracking the stone and sending shivers through the entire building. 
Seeing that Radiant and A-Flower had managed to regroup, Hard Strike was used once more to slam the attacking Radiant into the floor, crushing her between super tough teammate and unyielding stone floor. Flinging Hard Strike upwards into the fourth floor rotunda balcony, Black Berea turned towards A-Flower. A-Flower found herself facing an onslaught of black energy flung towards her, but managed to avoid every strike, only to be surprised when Black Maria ceased her attack to pick up the deputy mayor and the chef she had cocooned previously. Too late, A-Flower realized that in her wild dance to avoid her enemy's barrage, she had been forced onto the section of floor weakened by hard strike, the collapse of which sent the Lady of Peace dropping out of sight. Holding her captives, Black Berea turned towards the still groggy Radiant and, showing no mercy, kicked the heroine through the north door of the rotunda. Radiant's passage shattered the doors and sent any civilians still in the area running for cover. Coming out of City Hall, Black Maria picked up a nearby police car and, shrugging off the ACPD's small arms fire, used it to knock the overwhelmed Radiant across the avenue and into Kirby Park, where she fetched up against the memorial fountain. Setting down Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Allison, Black Berea activated a device on her belt before turning her attention to Radiant once more and commencing a vicious beatdown. Only a half dozen blows had landed, though, before Black Berea found herself faced with a host of arriving heroes. Captain Stupendous, Empyrean, The Odd Squad, The Conundrum Corporation, Ironclad, Jack of All Trades, The Bright Man, Mechanical Bill, Punching Judy, and Jackie Quick, Hard Strike, and the now jetpackless Jetpack Jones had gathered to stop the rampaging villain. True to her name, Jackie Quick even managed to pull Radiant, Jenkins, and Allison away to a safe distance. As Captain Stupendous ordered Black Maria to surrender, however, the ground around the memorial fountain began to shake, and a metal dome forced its way into the sunlight. As the stunned heroes watched, the dome opened, revealing fifteen bound civilians, all kidnapped by Black Maria, clustered around a strange, crackling machine. Taking advantage of the hero's surprise, Black Maria leapt over to the open dome and, unheeding of the shouts for her to stop, activated the machine. Instantly, dark waves of energy began to emanate from it, reaching as far as the damaged front of City Hall. In the eye of the roiling energy storm, not only did the bound captives begin to writhe in pain, but Black Maria herself fell to the ground in what appeared to be immense pain. The heroes, unaffected but dumbstruck, were further shocked when the fifteen captives began to lose their human shapes, their eyes turning red and their limbs and foreheads elongating, before finally settling into new forms, one familiar to any student of recent history. Fifteen Gatan sat around the machine and its now unconscious mistress. The Gatan, now in their native forms, broke free of their bonds and immediately commenced an attack upon the gathered heroes, save for five who began to merge into a monstrous multi-Gatan. Unbeknownst to the heroes of Alpha City or to any observers on the ground, when the Gatan on the surface were revealed, a group of Gatan battlecraft decloaked in orbit above the city. For a moment, the League of Nations Space Command was faced with the prospect of another destructive alien invasion, when another force of ships, identifying themselves as the Second Titanian Defense Group, led by the tracker from Titan, appeared from behind Earth's moon and engaged the Gatan fleet at close range. Meanwhile, in Kirby Park, our heroes found themselves hard-pressed by the sudden appearance of the Gitan, ready to fight and possessing the greater-than-human strength and durability of their species. Adding to the confusion was the revelation that Deputy Mayor Jenkins, 
Chef Michael Allison, and Radiant were also all Gatan shapeshifters. Had not a flower reappeared at that very moment, using her super combat skills to neutralize Jenkins and Allison, and engaging the foe Radiant, the heroes might have fallen to an attack from the rear. As it was, a flower proved more than a match for the superpowered alien. The Gatan, who had been captive in the sphere, though having the element of surprise, found themselves to be unable to overcome the masked heroes, and most were rendered harmless without even being able to leave the bounds of the park. The one which did escape was relentlessly pursued by both Jackie Quick and Hardstrike who worked together seamlessly to put the alien off balance, and ended up bringing its unconscious form back to the park to join its mates. Empyrean, alerted by the Bright Man to Space Command's warnings about the Gatan fleet, sped into Earth orbit. Meeting Space Cowboy on his way upwards, both heroes arrived at the battle location in time to help the tracker from Titan's ships handily defeat the abortive invasion. The multi gatan meanwhile, found itself faced with the might and brilliance of both Captain Stupendous and the Bright Man. Even with five times the strength and durability of a normal alien, already much greater than that of a human, the composite alien was only able to mount a token resistance against the pair, finding itself pummeled by the super-fast punches of the captain, and unable to defend itself against the effects of the Bright Man's bone-shaking Vibro Cannon. The alien was unable to maintain cohesion and separated into its component bodies, which were subdued without undue effort. All in all, the 15-minute battle, now being referred to as the Second Battle of Kirby Park, ensnared 18 Gatan spies who had replaced humans as a prelude to invading Alpha City. A flower who defeated the fake Radiant accounted for a 19th Gatan, who, disguised as a City Hall guard, had been keeping the replaced humans hostage in an empty office in the basement of City Hall, which A flower had discovered when she had fallen through the floor of the City Hall Rotunda. The question of what caused the invading aliens to move before they were prepared was solved when the Bright Man and Captain Stupendous were able to inspect the unconscious Black Maria. They were shocked to find that upon passing out, the black energy surrounding her had vanished, and that they both recognized the person under the obsidian sheen. It was Radiant, Captain Stupendous confirmed. While she is still unconscious, as best we can tell, Radiant was captured by the Catan while assisting the Jewel Star League in throwing the Catan out of our galaxy. It appears that a splinter group left the main retreating Catan fleet and attempted to mount another invasion of Earth, using one of their own disguised as Radiant and gifted with an approximation of her powers. The real Radiance seems to have been experimented on by infecting her light-based powers with Black Dwarf Star energy. She managed to escape just after her doppelganger was sent to Earth and adopted the Black Maria identity to allow her to begin capturing the Gatan who had replaced normal humans. She must have known that to warn the rest of us would have also warned the False Radiant and could have allowed the shapeshifters to escape capture. Reviewing her actions as Black Berea, it's obvious she only took action against the invaders. She must have set up today's whole sequence of events to make sure that there were enough heroes present to combat the threat when the Gatan were forced back into their normal shape. She did this at some cost to herself, as Anders will explain. At this point, the Bright Man took up the story. The machine she used to force the Gatan out of hiding affected her as much as it did them. The energy needed to cause them to change shape seems to have interacted with the Black Dwarf energy Radiant had been infected with, causing her to go into a coma. In addition, 
she appears to have been using the Black Dwarf energy to allow her the might to face off with the various heroes she was forced to fight today, at the cost of her own health. Radiant has been taken to the Eisner University Super Medicine Facility, and is being cared for by both Dr. Escalapius and the healer. They've managed to stabilize her for the moment, but now it is touch and go. When the remnants of the Gatan fleet were brought down to Earth and turned over to the League of Nations Directory of Science, the tracker from Titan told ACN's intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston that he had been warned of the invasion by a Hero Guild distress signal, apparently sent out by the real Radiant prior to her appearance at the food fair giving our comrades from Titan time to make the transit from their world to ours and be in place to take the invasion fleet by surprise. All of this was set up perfectly, the tracker stated. Radiant, working alone, got all of the elements of her strategy in place without any of them knowing what was coming, forcing the Gatan to abandon their plan and move far too soon and be defeated summarily with only herself being damaged in the process. Radiant is one of the finest heroes I know of, and I assure you, any help that Titan can provide to ensure her full recovery will be given gladly and without delay. And so our fair city finds itself saved from a threat we never knew existed. But while our heroes have won the day, Alpha City and our world faces some hard questions. With almost a thousand Gatan soldiers captured, how can we manage to keep them jailed until they can be turned over to the Jewel Star League? With another larger fleet of Gatan ships somewhere out in space, how do we ensure that, should a third attack occur, we are properly prepared? With the League of Nations Directory of Science having received the largest amount of alien technology in its history, how will our civilization be affected by the wonders we will no doubt soon discover? And, having seen one of our best and brightest come frighteningly close to giving her very life to protect us, how do we heal Radiant and honor her properly for all she has done? None of these questions have answers yet, but rest assured, Alpha Citizens, that when those answers are found, Alpha City News will be right there to bring them to you. For Alpha City News, I'm Craig Allen. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Alpha City News is produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds are provided by newsbeds.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please share them with us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can download us on iTunes, at Stitcher, at Libsyn, or on SoundCloud, and find us at wordpress.com under Alpha City News. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a super day, Alpha Citizen.